graduation. It's held up as this grand finish line, right? The culmination of years of hard work, late night study sessions and countless exams. You're supposed to burst through the confetti, diploma in hand, and know exactly what awesome adventure awaits. The world is your oyster, they say. Except for a lot of us, that's not how it goes. Instead of clarity, there's confusion. Instead of direction, there's doubt. Instead, it's like stumbling out of the stadium and into a wilderness. Which way to go? What's even the point? The path isn't always clear and the journey can feel overwhelming. Yeah, that post-graduation confusion, it's a shared experience, a common thread that binds many of us together. That's where we find our guy, Isaiah, standing at the edge of this vast, uncertain future. He's got potential, sure, a spark that everyone noticed. We all saw glimpses of it back in school, but now he's drifting. The structure of school is gone, and with it, a sense of direction. Stuck in that frustrating in-between of not a kid anymore, but not quite a man with a plan either. It's a limbo, a place of uncertainty and self-doubt. Days blur together, filled with video games, half-hearted job searches, and a nagging sense that he's letting everyone down, most of all, himself. The pressure mounts, and the future feels like a daunting, uncharted territory. It's in this raw, relatable place that the forge begins, grabbing us by the heart and saying, you're not alone. This journey, with all its ups and downs, is part of the process. And it's time to fight for your purpose, to carve out your own path, no matter how uncertain it may seem. The wilderness after graduation is just the beginning of a new adventure. Isaiah's mom, Miss Evelyn, now there's a woman who knows prayer. Every night she kneels beside her bed, whispering fervent prayers for her son. She's been carrying Isaiah's burdens on her heart for years. Each photograph she looks at, each quiet moment she spends alone, is filled with thoughts of him. Every missed opportunity, every sign of his fading spirit, it weighs on her. Her tear-streaked face tells the story of countless nights spent worrying, and her worn-out journal is filled with prayers and hopes for his future. But Miss Evelyn, she's got that quiet strength, that unwavering faith that whispers, God ain't done with my boy yet. Her hopeful eyes and serene expression in prayer show a woman who believes in miracles. She sees the good in Isaiah even when he can't. Her loving smile and proud gaze from a distance are constant reminders of her unwavering support. The problem is, he's got to want to see it too. Isaiah's frustration and isolation are barriers he needs to break through. He's comfortable in his rut, even if it's making him miserable. The blank expression on his face as he stares at the TV shows a young man lost in his own world. Change takes effort, and right now, the remote control is easier to pick up than his own two feet. His laziness is a shield against the effort required to change. It's a dance so many families know, the parent yearning for their child to rise, the child blind to their own potential the hopeful expression of a parent looking out the window and the proud family photo on the mantel tell a universal story. The child blind to their own potential. Isaiah's lost expression as he stares out the window is a reflection of his inner turmoil. But Miss Evelyn, she's about to change the music. Her determined expression and the resolve in her eyes as she holds the family photo show a woman ready to take action. And Isaiah's about to learn that sometimes love needs a little tough love to push you onto the dance floor of life. The uncertainty in his eyes as he looks up at his mother and her supportive gesture mark the beginning of a new chapter. Ultimatums? They're not always a bad thing. Sometimes they're the shake-up we need, the splash of cold water that jolts us awake. Miss Evelyn, with a heart full of love and a spine of steel, lays down the law Isaiah's got to get a job, contribute to the household and find some direction, or he's out. No more free rides, no more empty promises. Now you might think this is harsh, but sometimes that's what love looks like. It's about pushing someone to be their best, even when it's uncomfortable. And let's be real, Isaiah needed this push. This ultimatum becomes the stepping stone, forcing him to confront his inertia. He's angry at first, of course, he feels misunderstood, like his mum doesn't get it. But little does he know, she gets it more than he realises. She's not trying to punish him, she's trying to launch him. Enter More Fitness, a local gym that's more than just weights and treadmills. It's a place of community, sweat and second chances. Desperate for a job, any job, Isaiah finds himself face to face with Joshua, the owner 
and the man who's about to change everything. Now Joshua, he's got this quiet intensity, a past that's shaped him, and a heart for helping young men like Isaiah find their way. He sees through Isaiah's facade, sees the potential buried beneath the apathy. He doesn't offer easy answers or empty platitudes. Instead, he challenges Isaiah with questions that dig deep. What are you passionate about? What legacy do you want to leave behind? What does your faith mean to you? These questions, they're like weights themselves, forcing Isaiah to confront the heavy truths he's been avoiding. The gym becomes his training ground, but it's not just his muscles getting stronger. Faith. It's not just about going to church on Sundays or reciting verses. It's a journey, a continuous process of growth and understanding. It's about the fire in your heart, the belief in something bigger than yourself. It's about the passion that drives you, the light that guides you through the darkest times. Isaiah, he grew up in the church, knew all the right words, but somewhere along the way, the flame had dwindled to embers. He remembered the hymns, the sermons, but they felt distant, almost like echoes from another life. He'd lost sight of what it meant to truly live out his faith. The rituals had become routine, the words had lost their meaning. Joshua, though, he sees faith as the bedrock, the foundation for everything. To him, faith is not just a part of life, it is life itself, the core of his being. I encourage Isaiah to read the Bible, not as a chore, but as a roadmap, a source of strength and guidance. Each verse, each chapter, a step towards rediscovering his purpose. And slowly, through their conversations, through the challenges he faces at the gym and in the community, Isaiah starts to see it too. He begins to reconnect with the essence of his faith, finding new meaning in old teachings. He begins to understand that faith isn't a passive thing. It's an active choice, a daily surrender that empowers you to face your fears and become the man you were created to be. It's a journey of transformation, a path to becoming whole. More fitness isn't just about getting ripped, it's about giving back. Joshua believes that true strength comes from serving others, from lifting up those around you. I take Isaiah under my wing, showing him that a strong body means nothing without a compassionate heart. They volunteer at homeless shelters, mentor troubled youth, and become pillars of support in their community. At first, I was hesitant, but I found myself drawn to the work. I discovered a sense of purpose I never knew I craved, a fulfillment that goes beyond myself. He learns the value of hard work, the importance of teamwork, and the transformative power of selflessness. The sweat he pours into the gym pales in comparison to the sweat equity he invests in his community. And with each act of service, he feels himself growing, becoming more than he ever thought possible. Section 7, Scars to Wisdom, the Power of Forgiveness. Everyone has scars, those invisible wounds that shape who we are. I carry the weight of a broken relationship with my father, a hurt that festers and fuels my anger. I too harbor pain from my past, a mistake that haunts me and threatens to extinguish my hope. Through their shared vulnerability, they discover the healing power of forgiveness. They learn that holding on to anger and resentment only poisons the soul, preventing true growth and happiness. They realize that forgiveness is not about condoning the actions of others, but about releasing themselves from the chains of bitterness. It's a difficult journey fraught with setbacks and emotional turmoil, but with each step towards forgiveness, they find a lightness, a freedom that allows them to embrace the future with open hearts. Section 8. Echoes of our struggle. A generation's plea. Isaiah's journey is not unique. He represents a generation wrestling with uncertainty, searching for meaning in a world saturated with distractions and fleeting promises. The forge holds up a mirror to society, reflecting the pressures and expectations placed upon young people today. It acknowledges the challenges they face, the lure of instant gratification, the fear of failure, and the pressure to conform. But it also offers a resounding message of hope, reminding us that within each young person lies a wellspring of potential waiting to be ignited. It's a call to action for parents, mentors, and communities to invest in our youth, to provide guidance, support, and opportunities for them to discover their passions and live purpose-driven lives. Section 9. The call to rise within you, the forge burns. The forge. It's a powerful metaphor for the transformative journey we all must undertake. It's about embracing the heat of challenges, the pressure of adversity, and using them to shape us into something stronger, more resilient. The Forge reminds us that growth is not a passive process. It's about actively choosing to step outside our comfort zones, to confront our fears, 
and to embrace the unknown. It's about seeking out mentors, building supportive communities and nurturing our faith. It's about understanding that our past does not define us, but it can refine us, shaping us into the people we are meant to become. The message of the Forge is simple yet profound. The power to change, to rise above our circumstances, lies within each of us. We all have a fire within waiting to be kindled. Section 10. Beyond the screen, carrying the fire. As the credits roll, we're left with a sense of hope and a call to action. The Forge is more than just a movie, it's a movement, a catalyst for personal and spiritual growth. It's a reminder that we are not alone in our struggles, that there are people around us who care and want to see us succeed. It challenges us to be better versions of ourselves, to invest in our communities, and to live lives that reflect our deepest values. It encourages us to find our own forges, those places and people that push us, challenge us, and help us to become the best versions of ourselves. So let the fire of the forge ignite a passion within you, a desire to live a life of purpose, service, and unwavering faith. If you found inspiration in this journey, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more stories of faith and transformation.